Welcome to the 3D Biology YouTube channel. Visit the 3dbiology.com site, linked in the description for articles, animations, and more. So today we will be looking at detailed human brain anatomy in 3D. The cerebral cortex is the outer gray matter of the cerebrum and is made up of two hemispheres. The two cerebral hemispheres consist of depressions or sulci and elevations or gyri. It is partially separated by a deep longitudinal fissure. The medial longitudinal fissure separates it into two hemispheres. The cortex can be divided into the frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal lobe. The cortex includes primary sensory areas, which receive sensory information, and association areas. The frontal lobe includes Broca's area, responsible for production of language, and the temporal lobe includes Wernicke's area, responsible for speech comprehension. The frontal cortex, as the name suggests, can be found in the anterior of each cerebral hemisphere. It is separated from the parietal lobe by the central sulcus and from the temporal lobe by the lateral sulcus. The premotor as well as the primary motor cortex are found in the frontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex can be found in the anterior frontal lobe. It is where executive function is carried out and high-level filtering, meaning acceptable behavior, predicting outcomes, determination of good and bad, working toward a goal. It receives connections from the brainstem arousal systems. The middle frontal gyrus is found between the superior and the inferior frontal sulci. It has a role in the reorienting of attention. The inferior frontal gyrus, a part of the prefrontal cortex, is the location of Broca's area, responsible for speech creation and language processing. The orbital gyrus can be found on the inferior surface of the frontal lobe. This area of the frontal lobe rests on the orbital plate of the frontal bone. There are four orbital gyri, the posterior, the lateral, the medial, and the anterior. The precentral gyrus is Brodmann Area 4. It is located at the rear of the frontal lobe, just before the central sulcus. It has a diagonal orientation and is continuous with the postcentral gyrus. Behind it is the postcentral gyrus. It is the location of the primary motor cortex involved in the execution of voluntary motor movements and skeletal muscles. The postcentral gyrus is located in the anterior parietal lobe. It includes Brodmann areas 1, 2, and 3. It is where the primary sen somatosensory cortex can be found. It is the location of neurons that integrate sensory information from distinct parts of the body. In front of it is the central sulcus. In the back of it is the postcentral sulcus. The supramarginal gyrus is located anterior to the angular gyrus. It is part of the somatosensory association cortex. It is involved in the interpretation of tactile sensory data. The angular gyrus is in Brodmann area 39. 
It is posterior to the supermarginal gyrus in the parietal lobe and close to the superior edge of the temporal lobe. It is involved in complex language functions such as reading, writing, and their interpretation. It sends visual information to vernix area. Its other functions involve attention, memory retrieval, and spatial cognition, including distinguishing between left and right. The superior parietal lobule includes Brodmann area 5 and 7. Its functions include spatial orientation. It receives visual input and sensory input. The occipital lobe of the cerebral cortex is named after the occipital bone and is the smallest lobe of the cortex. It is located above the temporal and below the parietal lobe. The occipital lobe includes the visual cortex, mainly Brodmann area 17 or V1. It also includes V2 or the ventral stream, which is a secondary visual cortex. Underneath the occipital lobe is the tentorium cerebelli, which divides the cerebellum from the cerebrum. The lateral occipital sulcus separates occipital gyri. The superior temporal gyrus is located in the temporal lobe below the lateral sulcus. It includes Brodmann area 41 and 42 and Wernicke's area. It is the location of the auditory cortex for processing of sounds. The middle temporal gyrus is located in the middle of the temporal lobe. It has been linked to accessing word meaning while reading, figuring out distance, and recognition of known faces. The inferior temporal gyrus is the lowest of the gyri of the temporal lobe. It is separated from the middle temporal gyrus by the inferior temporal sulcus. The occipital temporal sulcus separates it from the fusiform gyrus. It is involved in visual stimulus processing on the level of object recognition based on form and color. The white matter is found deep in the brain, including the cerebellum, and superficially in the spinal cord. White matter is made up of axon bundles that connect gray matter areas. Within the white matter, one can find gray matter nuclei, like brainstem nuclei, and the basal ganglia. The name comes from the color of fatty, myelinated axons. The cingulate cortex includes the whole cingulate gyrus and can be found medially in the cerebral hemispheres above the corpus callosum. It is part of the limbic system. It functions both in respiratory control, executive function, as well as learning, memory, and emotions. The cerebrum, or telencephalon, is the largest part of the brain. It contains not only the two cerebral hemispheres, made up of an outer cortex of gray matter and an inner white matter, but also subcortical structures such as the basal ganglia, the hippocampus, and the olfactory bulb. The cerebrum is involved in voluntary motor actions, sensory perception, memory, and thoughts. The cerebrum develops from the prosencephalon. The cerebellum is located in the posterior underneath the cerebral hemispheres. The pons and the medulla are anterior to it. The actual name means little brain. It is made up of a gray matter cortex 
deeper white matter with myelinated fibers, deep gray matter cerebellar nuclei inside the white matter, and a fluid-filled ventricle. The cerebellum is made up of two hemispheres and a protruding midline thermos, or worm in Latin. The white matter is called the arbor vitae, or tree of life, due to its appearance when sectioned. The cortex is made up of a continuous layer of tissue, folded repeatedly, although it appears as parallel grooves on the surface. The gyri of the cerebellum are called folia. The lateral cerebellum is called the cerebrocerebellum, and the medial cerebellum is called the spinocerebellum. The cerebellum is divided into three lobes, the anterior above the primary fissure, the posterior below the primary fissure, and the flocula nodular below the posterior fissure. The cerebellum is associated with movement, including motor learning, timing, coordination and precision, as well as language and attention. The cerebellum receives input from the sensory systems of the spinal cord. Neurons most commonly found in the cerebellum include Purkinje and granule cells. There are three important axon types in the cerebellum, the mercy fibers, climbing fibers, and parallel fibers. Three pairs of cerebellar peduncles connect the cerebellum to the nervous system. The superior cerebellar peduncle connects to the cerebral cortex. The middle cerebellar peduncle connects to the pons. The inferior cerebellar peduncle has output to the reticular formation and vestibular nuclei. The medulla oblongata is part of the brainstem. Medullary pyramids contain the corticospinal and corticobulbar tracts. The swellings or olives are due to the inferior alveolar nuclei. The medulla connects higher brain levels to the spinal cord. The medulla functions in involuntary actions. Its autonomic control includes heart rate, respiration, and sleep. The word pons comes from the Latin for bridge. It is in the brainstem between the midbrain and the medulla. Within it are tracts that carry sensory signals up and other signals down. In the rear, it is made up of two pairs of cerebellar peduncles. The middle cerebellar peduncle connects the pons to the cerebellum. It is located in front of the cerebellum. It has two major divisions, the ventral pons and the tegmentum. The pons contain several cranial nerve nuclei, including the vestibulocochlear nucleus, the facial nerve nucleus, the nucleus abducens, and the motor nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. It is part of various autonomic functions, such as arousal, sleep regulation, equilibrium, and muscle tone. The hippocampus, or seahorse in Latin, is part of the limbic system and can be found as a pair, one on each side by the floor of the lateral ventricle. The parahippocampal gyrus conceals the hippocampus. It is made up of the hippocampus itself and the dentate gyrus, which is surrounded by hippocampal gray matter. The name corna ammonis, or ram's horn, is given to it because of its shape as shown in cross-section.
The abbreviation CA given to its parts including CA1, CA2, CA3, and CA4 come from this name. The hippocampus takes part in storing of explicit memory, such as information about objects, places, and people. This is done through long-term potentiation. Hippocampal damage is seen in dementia, such as Alzheimer's disease. It is also affected in schizophrenia and PTSD. The three major pathways in the hippocampus include the mossy fiber pathway, the Schaefer collateral pathway, and the perforant fiber pathway. Input comes from the entorhinal cortex. Outputs include the entorhinal cortex and the prefrontal cortex. It is modulated by dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. The hippocampus is one of the few brain regions where new nerve cells are born. The putamen is a round structure that is part of the basal ganglia. Together with the caudate nucleus, it forms the dorsal striatum. To the medial of it lies the globus pallidus. It functions in regulation of movement and is connected to the globus pallidus and substantia nigra. The putamen is affected in Parkinson's disease, where involuntary muscle movements occur. Together with the globus pallidus, it is known as the lentiform nucleus, as they appear like a lens-like shape. The globus pallidus, which is part of the basal ganglia, translates into pale globe. There are two parts, the pars externa and the pars interna. It projects mainly to the substantia nigra and thalamus and functions in regulation of voluntary movement through inhibitory action, whereas the cerebellum provides excitatory action. It receives inputs from the caudate and the putamen. The V-shaped internal capsule is a white matter structure that separates the caudate nucleus and putamen and also the caudate and thalamus from the putamen and globus pallidus. It contains ascending and descending tracts connecting the cortex. The band in the V of the internal capsule is called the genum. It has an anterior limb and a posterior limb. Much of the internal capsule is the corticospinal tract, which carries information from the primary motor cortex to motor neurons in the spinal cord. The caudate nucleus, along with the putamen, form the dorsal striatum, which is divided by the internal capsule. In each hemisphere, it forms a thick anterior part called the head, which tapers to a body and a narrow tail, giving it a C-shape. The tail curves toward the front. It is located on both sides of the thalamus. It functions in associative and procedural learning, inhibitory control of action and movement. There is a link between the caudate and sleep patterns. Movement functions include posture as well as speed of directed movements. Neuronal connections from the caudate reach the substantia nigra and globus pallidus and it is innervated by neurons from the substantia nigra. The caudate has projections to the hippocampus and receives projections from the amygdala. There are data showing effects on emotion, hyperactivity, and drive. The pair of amygdala, deep in the temporal lobes, are part of the limbic system.
here. Almond shape. The amygdala are made up of the basolateral complex, the medial nucleus, the cortical nucleus, the central nucleus, and the intercalated cell clusters. The amygdala is larger in males. The amygdala play a role in emotional responses, decision making, and processing of memory. This involves memories associated with emotional events. Each amygdala has an independent memory system. The right amygdala is concerned with fear conditioning and declarative memory, as well as in associating time and place with emotions. The amygdala are involved in memory consolidation. They are the main structure involved in the fight or flight response. Projections of the amygdala include the locus ceruleus, the hypothalamus, the nucleus accumbens, and the thalamus. There is data showing that the left amygdala has a role in the reward system. It has also been linked to obsessive and compulsive behavior, anxiety disorders, and PTSD. The left amygdala develops first, while the right amygdala grows for a longer span of time. The thalamus is a gray matter structure in the forebrain. It is found medially. The thalamus is a hub for information relay. It relays sensory signals, regulates alertness, arousal, sleep, and consciousness. Every sensory system utilizes the thalamus except for the olfactory system. It is connected to the cortex by many thalamocortical radiations. The hypothalamus is part of the limbic system and is found under the thalamus. The name hypothalamus means under chamber. The hypothalamus links the nervous system and the endocrine system via the pituitary. Therefore, it has a neuroendocrine function. It works to control sleep, hunger, body temperature, and activities of the autonomic nervous system. The hypothalamus synthesizes and secretes hormones which control the pituitary gland. Its connections include the reticular formation, the brain stem, the amygdala, and the septum. Other functions of the hypothalamus include controlling defensive behavior. The midbrain is the anterior part of the brainstem. The dorsal side of the midbrain is the tectum, which means roof. The tectum has four colliculi or bumps on its surface. The tegmentum is the floor and is ventral to the cerebral aqueduct. It is involved in homeostasis. Superior colliculi process visual information and inferior colliculi process auditory information. It functions in alertness, sleep, temperature regulation, hearing, and vision. The superior colliculus can be found on top of the midbrain and is a paired structure. It is a multi-sensory structure. <laughs>
Some of its functions include directing eye movement, head turns, and shifts in attention. The inferior colliculus is located over the trochlear nerve and below the superior colliculus. It is a large main nucleus of the auditory pathway in the midbrain, where auditory pathways converge. It also functions in spatial localization through hearing, as well as an integration station and switchboard. Its inputs include the auditory cortex and brainstem nuclei. The name inferior colliculus means lower hill. Inputs include several brainstem nuclei. The lateral geniculate is a small thalamic nucleus located at the end of the optic tract. It is a visual pathway relay center. Information from the eye and optic tract goes through the lateral geniculate on its way to the primary visual cortex. The lateral geniculate has six layers of neurons. The medial geniculate body is made up of several nuclei. It is part of the auditory system. The medial geniculate is a relay between the inferior colliculus and the auditory cortex. The pineal is a small endocrine gland which is not paired. The name comes from the shape of the gland which looks like a small pine cone. It produces melatonin a serotonin-derived hormone, which modulates sleep cycles. The pineal can be found where two of the halves of the thalamus meet behind the third ventricle and is part of the epithalamus. The pituitary is an endocrine gland located at the bottom of the hypothalamus. Hormones secreted here control blood pressure, temperature regulation, sex organ function, thyroid function, pain relief, and water regulation. The posterior pituitary is connected to the hypothalamus by the pituitary stalk. The pituitary has an anterior, intermediate, and posterior lobe. The posterior or epithalamic commissure is a white matter tract which connects the two hemispheres of the cerebrum. It crosses the midline dorsally of the cerebral aqueduct. It forms one of the stalks that attach the pineal gland to the wall of the third ventricle. The posterior commissure connects language processing centers of the two hemispheres. The anterior commissure is a white matter tract much smaller than the corpus callosum. It connects the two temporal lobes of the cerebrum in front of the fornix. It is important in pain sensation and olfaction as it includes fibers from the neospinal thalamic tract and olfactory tracts. There are two C-shaped cerebral spinal fluid filled lateral ventricles. They stretch from the inferior horn of the temporal lobe all the way down to the third ventricle. They can be divided into three horns and a body. The frontal horn can be found in the frontal lobe of the brain, while the occipital horn enters the occipital lobe. The lateral ventricles are the largest of all the ventricles.
The third ventricle is filled with cerebrospinal fluid and is found between the two halves of the thalamus. It is narrow. The epithalamus is behind it. The cerebral aqueduct is found ventral to the cerebellum and dorsal to the pons. Also called the sylvian aqueduct, it contains CSF and connects the third and fourth ventricles. The gray matter around the aqueduct is called the periaqueductal gray. The fourth ventricle carries cerebrospinal fluid and can be found extending from the aqueduct of Sylvius to the albex in the caudal medulla. It is at the level of the pons. The cerebral peduncles form the sides of the fourth ventricle. The rhomboid fossa is the floor of this ventricle. The fourth ventricle has a diamond shape in cross-section. CSF flows into the fourth ventricle through the cerebral aqueduct. The central canal runs through the spinal cord. It is filled with cerebrospinal fluid and it transports nutrients to the spinal cord. In the upper regions of the spinal cord, it can be found in the anterior portion, later becoming more central and ultimately posterior. The widest part of the central canal is the terminal or fifth ventricle. The corpus callosum, which translates into top body, is a thick nerve tract that connects the two cerebral hemispheres. It can be found below the cerebral cortex crossing the midline. The corpus callosum is the largest white matter body with several hundred million axons. It can be divided into the rostrum, the genome, the body, and the splenium. The corpus callosum allows for communication between the two hemispheres of the cerebrum. The septum pellucidum is a membrane between the two cerebral hemispheres. It separates lateral ventricles and encloses the fifth ventricle. It stretches from the corpus callosum to the fornix. The fornix is a part of the limbic system and is an output of the hippocampus. It starts on each side of the hippocampus as fimbria hippocampi and continues as the crura or posterior pillars. At the commissure of fornix, the fibers meet forming the body. Around the anterior commissure, the body divides again into the anterior pillars, or columns, which continue on to the mammillary bodies. The fornix is important in establishing episodic memories, and fornix damage leads to problems with spatial memory. Thanks for watching. For licensing inquiries or custom work, email contact at 3dbiology.com. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to see new videos as they are released. Disclaimer. The information on this channel is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. All content, including text, graphics, images, and information, is for information purposes only.